Hello. Today we're going to work on some JVC DVD recorders and later we'll have a look at the uh, Scantic machine in a great big box that I've been talking about for a few weeks now. Now the JVC DVD recorders have a selection of these units. Uh, most include hard disk recorders as well and one even includes uh, a mini DV deck. Some years ago I used this extensively for customers who wanted uh, content transferred onto DVDs. These days, with uh, hard disks and USB sticks being so much cheaper, I hardly ever transfer any content onto DVD, and I actually discourage uh, anyone using DVDs as an archive uh, medium. But still, I'm asked to generate DVDs on occasion, so uh, I have the equipment. And also, these units have other uses, including dubbing content from DVDs, uh, and in particular for use with DVD RAM recordings. Now the great thing about these JVC models is you can put a, a disc recorded on any one of these units into any one of the others and add more recordings or finalize the disc with any other model. That's not true of some other manufacturers such as Panasonic. And though I do use some Panasonic units occasionally because they can do things like support both NTSC and PAL recordings, whereas the JVCs are PAL only, uh, it's JVC ones that I use mostly. However, time has not been kind to these uh, JVC DVD recorders. They break down frequently and parts are becoming more or less impossible to obtain, so they're a bit of a challenge to keep going. Now, I'm afraid we jump into a point where I was already working on a JVC DRMH300 model, which is one of the later uh, models. It was booting slowly, but otherwise would seem to work. Some capacitors have been changed in the power supply already, but I doubted that these were causing the problem. Let's get stuck in. This is the one we changed the capacitors on. I can see because I mounted the capacitor away from that heat sink. And we think this one's got a slow start, a slow boot. Let's see though if it does boot and if so, whether it functions. Right, it's very slow, it should have gone ahead by now. So that distinctive noise. And then that strange sound. And then it starts up. Right, now it's switched off into standby, ready to start up. Fan goes. We'll just confirm that we can navigate and play something off the hard disk. Yes. So this seems to be exactly the same as the other one. Slow to start up, but then otherwise working. And if we do a reboot from this point, let's confirm that that doesn't take too long. Did I do that or not? Didn't hold the buttons for long enough. Display is particularly dim on this one. Resetting. We can hear the hard disk spinning. Have we? No. No, that seems to be fine. Now let's try the 200 model. Right, this is the 200. Just powered it up. The hard disk sounds a bit better on this one start straight away. It's loading, the display's brighter on this one too. You might not see it from your angle, but it is. 
That sounds a lot better than the 300 models. Starts up nicely. Just check if we have a disc in here. No, right, we don't. So this one we have to use the remote control because there's no navigation buttons. It's in HDD mode, so let's uh, try to play something from the hard disk. It seems to have hung. It's ignoring all commands now. Can I eject? Anything? No. The whole machine seems to have crashed. Now it's crashed. It's doing a reboot. So could this machine have power supply problems too? It's hard to know if this is a hard disk problem or a power supply problem. But I'm thinking power supply. So Let's power it down and take the power supply out of this one. This is a lot easier than it was on the 300 models. Now I don't know if this power supply board's ever been off this machine before, but looking at one of those capacitors it looks like it may have been changed. Oops, I just dropped a screw in it. That's not ideal, is it? Okay, I'll have to tackle that problem later. Let's disconnect the hard disk. Sorry, DVD. Multi-way cable. Another connector there and power to the hard disk here. Right. I think that's all the wires off this board. Now this, these um, standoffs for the PCB standoffs here and we need to squeeze them and spring them out. Like that. There's the uh, power supply board. I'll just go and retrieve that screw I lost earlier. Now, care because there could be high voltage on that capacitor there. So we'll treat that with suitable respect. It's reading 32 volts and falling, so that's not too serious, but I still don't want to short it. Some people just short them together, and it, I don't like that. I never like to see sparks on modern equipment. 2 volts, fine, sorted. Have I or anybody else worked on this board before? Well, let's test some capacitors. I've generally found these to be quite good, but it's some of these other ones that are problematic. I think I'll just take this cable off. Power supply cable there, we'll drop that into there. My favourite capacitance, uh, an ESR test meter, which has got a cable remote control, which is just marvellous. Saves so much time. So 
So I'm looking, for example, at this one here. Which is number 3052, 470 microfarads. I think I can get to it from the top of the board, actually. Let's test that one. Oops, my meter fell off. Try it again. That says 550. So, the old problem being multiple capacitors, I think. Let's look at these 470 microfarad capacitors here. They certainly don't look to have ever been changed. Yeah, 700 and something. So again, somewhat inconclusive readings you get when you have multiple capacitors on a board. Yes, this 27 microfarad capacitor down here, that has been changed already, I can tell. Let's test this uh, 4.7 microfarad 100 volt one here. That's reading 4 microfarads. So, yeah, we might change that one. Let's go through these. There's 1500s and 2200s and a 1000. Let's go through all the green ones here. So, from what I can tell, all of those large capacitors are good. There's a couple here that are a little low. There's an 18 that's reading 14 and a 220 that's reading 200. Not enough to stop the machine from working, I'd have said. No smoking guns so far, but I found a 100 microfarad capacitor that's reading about 70, so that's going to go. ESR is only 1 ohm though, but even so, we'll change that. Here's a 22 microfarad capacitor reading 16 volts, so that's going as well. OK, I've been through this board and replaced every capacitor that seemed to be out of spec or just looked at me with a bad attitude. And there were about, oh, probably eight capacitors that were out of spec, but only one of them was really a long way. Most of them were just, you know, within 20%. So I don't think I've got a smoking gun here, but we'll uh, refit the power supply and give it another whirl. You know, what I'd like to have seen, if you like, is either all the capacitors were a spec um, or at least one or two that were you know a long way out and then you say ah yes well that's the problem but uh, there was nothing really that bad I don't think so so we fit the board it's not as easy as it might be a little bit fully to get in The fan cable, you need to make sure that that's uh, on the top before you drop the board in. Right, there's these um, PCB clips. Four of those, I think. Right, reconnect the hard disk power cable, the big multi-way cable, another power cable here. Nope, oh, that's in the wrong place, that's the one for it, yes. This is the cable for the uh, DVD writer. fan cable, two screws, right, quick check that, that all looks correct before we power it up, right,
You won't switch on. So loading it says it's making all the right noises. Okay, and it should go into standby. Good, switch it on. HDD selected. Uh, navigation, I think I'm supposed to press. There we go. Original. Select. And it's hung exactly the same. Not having much luck today, are we? What we're going to do then is try again with the JVC uh, service disc called Advisor Pro. This one. Right. So. Whilst holding the eject button in apply power. Twenty seconds later it should open the drawer. So this bypasses the boot sequence, I think. Yeah. Put the service disk in and power cycle again. But this time power cycle it with the stop button pressed. And then we should get something on the screen in about a minute. Anything going to happen? Doesn't look like it, does it? No, it doesn't appear to work. I'm not sure what it is going to do, but it doesn't seem to be reading that disk. Alright, what I've done, I've got another hard disk which came from another one of these machines. So I've temporarily patched that one in, trying to boot, made some sort of repetitive clicky noises from the hard disk. So it looks like that may have a fault, but it may not be unrecoverable. So let's see if we can, first, let's see if we can get it to boot at all. And if we can't, let's try using that disk one more time. So. At the moment it doesn't seem to be booting, it may boot very slowly, but we'll go for the um, JVC disk again. Right. So, holding the stop button down, it should be soon that something will happen. No, it doesn't look like it. It may be that, of course, this DVD drive has failed and so it's not reading the, the boot disk. OK, I have another machine here and a rather faded label says Become unreliable and crashing. PSU service possibly required. Well, I've just given that PSU a service, so maybe we have enough here to uh, make one that works. OK, I'm going to have to get that service disk out of there before we start. Except that the writer may be interchangeable, or it may not. The DVD writer looks like it may be interchangeable with this one. So I could possibly drop it in, at least temporarily, to see if... Uh, I can then get it to read the boot disk. We could try that. I wonder if I can do that without taking the drive out. So to get these cables over to this drive. All right, that's um, quite a bodge up, isn't it? Let's see if we can get it to uh, operate this drive and then run the boot disk on it. It's a horrible angle, but let's give it a whirl. So I need to 
press and hold this. No, which eject button do I need to press and hold? This one. Yes. Press and hold this eject button while I power up. And hopefully that will open. All right, let's try that again. So pressing this jack button, let's see if this drive opens. Yes, that worked. Take that disc out, who knows what that is. Right, now we'll do the sequence of holding the stop button down for uh, for one minute. One minute later. Oh yes at last. This is it. This is what we want. So the first thing it does is says checking HDD. Actually making some progress. Um, HDD smart self test failed. HDD is physically broken and it's ejected the service disk. So, as I suspected, the hard disk has failed in this machine and so has the uh, DVD writer, which is why we had to borrow that one. The instructions then just don't really help. They just say, well, you know, you're done. Error code 10. Yeah, here we go, error code 10. So, HDD must be replaced. Well, that's all well and good. How? So, at least I've managed to demonstrate the JVC service disk, even if it's been utterly useless in fixing anything. Right. So, all we can say, then, is that this DRMH200 is a dead loss, because both the hard disk and the DVD writer have failed. Let's see if there's anything we can do with this one here that says it intermittently crashes, so we need to change, uh, do some work on the power supply. Right, that's for another day. So we have found on all these DRMH300 machines that the 5 volt line here, which is on the this FARC cable at the other end from the yellow, this 5 volt line here is very low and it seems that the voltage is slowly rising as the unit warms up and you typically think that's some sort of capacitor issue but looking at the uh, circuit diagram it doesn't appear to be the, uh, there's a control chip a small 5 volt regulator, a low dropout 5 volt regulator uh, which is being fed with something around about 6 volts as you'd expect and there's a, a control line to that chip uh, on pin 5 and that control line should be telling the chip to switch on and provide 5 volt output but it doesn't appear to be. Now the problem being that that chip is on the underside of this board uh, and you can't get to that whilst the board is connected up to the rest of the unit so it makes it extremely hard to work on but I do have the service manual and it appears that that 5 volt line should be, sorry, the, the, the wire that drives the, uh, this chip on pin 5 might appear as a link on the top of the PCB somewhere. So let's see if we can match, this of course will be that way round, let's see if we can match the links anywhere. All right, let me find any other component I recognize on the top and see if that lines up with what's going on underneath. CN5302, a connector, an 8-pin connector 5302. Aha, uh -huh. that's this one. It's not populated, actually, because there's an alternative, which is this connector here, which is, which is populated. 
I think that's for the other DVD drive, that one. So that's here, so it gives us a clue where we are. Bear in mind it'll all be mirrored. And that, I believe, is the one we're looking for. So that should be the signal to switch. So we need to check that that goes high, somewhere around about 5 volts. And provided it does, then we'd expect the chip to give us 5 volts, the chip we can't get access to. If it's some indeterminate voltage, sort of, you know, a volt or something, then that would explain why it's not switching on properly. Right, so I'm expecting that to go high pretty much immediately. 4.83 volts. Yeah, that's high. That's a high signal. So it's asking for 5 volts here but we're only getting 3.4. So it's looking like that regulator I see is at fault on all of them, all of these three machines. Well, is that likely? Let's do a few more checks. I guess I could cut the wire and then see that that voltage disappears down to zero. I could do that, couldn't I? If we cut that link on the top, we could then convert, confirm that the hard disk voltage disappears down to an even lower reading than three and a half volts. Let's do that. So I'm assuming now this voltage will be quite low, being not driven anymore. Yeah. And so we should see the voltage from the regulator disappear down to zero. Correct. I'll remake that connection. So I think we're fairly satisfied now that we're in the correct area. I'll just uh, remake that contact with the uh, uh, pliers. So I'll just confirm. So that's no supply to the hard disk to speak of. Make that connection goes up to three and a half volts or something like that. Okay. So that's the control line to the regulator, which is supposed to give power to the hard disk, but is failing. Hey, we're making progress here. Right, that's switched off. Let's resolder that uh, control line wire. So what else could possibly be the cause before we blame that regulator chip? Well, <clears throat> really we want to see what the V in voltage is on pin 8. Now it comes from these diodes and an, induct, uh, an inductor which I can't get to, but it also goes out to some other diodes which I may be able to get to. 5, 3, 11, 12 and 13. The anode of 5, 3, 11. Can I find 5, 3, 11? I can see where 5, 3, 11 could be fitted. It appears not to have been fitted on this machine but I can see where it would be fitted and there is a land which I should be able to reach there and that still has 5 volts on it even now actually right so that's f 6 volts so that 6 volts is going to the input to this IC it's getting the switch on and yet we're not getting 5 volts well, I guess what I could do is plug, unplug the hard disk completely and have a look at the voltage on this, but with no load at all, we may get something approaching 5 volts, but let's have a look. Yes, we do get 5 volts with zero load, but I don't think the hard disk is overloading it. Uh, we could measure the current, I guess. If I spring that connector out, at one end or the other. The IC is supposed to be able to deliver one amp. It might be easier to cut the wire and do a current measurement in the wire than springing this connector out and then try to prod a wire something in there. So I think we'll do that. We'll cut this wire. I'll make a decent job of repairing it later.
on this multimeter here. Let's see what hard disk current we measure. About 100 milliamps. Well, well within the capability of that chip. And what voltage do we have now? I need another multimeter. Okay, 3.9 volts at 100 milliamps. And it's crept up to around about 4 volts. So we'll resolder that cable. We are fairly convinced now that the ICs there, those regulator ICs, are at fault. And that is a MM1665AH low dropout regulator. So I will have to source some of those. That's uh, going to take a while. The original MM1665H regulators seem to be virtually unobtainable now. Uh, the one company apparently did have some, did not reply to my request for some. Maybe they didn't just want to sell five or so. So it looks like it was probably supplied um, only to JVC for use in this and particular uh, applications that are similar. So I have found a possible alternative. It's um, part number UCC285-5. The package is subtly different, but I think it will fit. It has the same pinout for all but one pin. And it does include the power down feature when pin 5 is taken low, which of course is really important. The difference is that when the uh, original regulator has a noise decoupling capacitor on pin 4, uh, this alternative one has a sense input on pin 4. So that needs to be uh, tied to the output voltage on pin 1, and then I believe it will be a drop-in replacement. So I'm going to order some of those from China, and uh, they'll arrive in a few weeks. So part 2 will be, let's see if we can install uh, those on the bottom of the PCB, and if the... Uh, power will apply correctly and at a sensible speed for the hard disk. Uh, I think I may also add a bit of heatsink um, solution to this because I suspect the original regulators probably died through being overheated. Right, so that's for part two. Now then, something else. Uh, so in the meantime, look, I know a lot of my subscribers have been uh, very interested in what is in the great big cardboard box. I've told you it's scantic, but that's all. So should we have a quick look? Okay. I've told you this is a Scantic machine, but I haven't told you anything else. Well, I'll tell you thing, something now. It is a video recorder. So uh, let's see what's inside here, shall we? I'm obviously not going to do a full repair on this now, but let's uh, have a look. If I can break into the box. Oh, the excitement. say this was kindly sent to me by a lady who didn't want it to go to waste. All I had to do was pay for the shipping and make a donation to charity and I'll give you a link below the charity that uh, I have uh, selected. And if you like what I'm doing here with this machine do please consider adding some to that charity yourself. Scantic operating instructions. Oh wow, look at that. Complete with power cable. It's big, it's heavy, and it's silver. Do you recognise it yet? It's a badge engineered Philips N1700. The VCR logo has fallen off the front there, which is a shame. It says Scantic there. And of course, the um, Phillips ones are dark grey. I've never seen one in silver before. Take the top off.
this should slide back, but it seems a bit stuck. Aha, uh -huh, it's working. Doesn't seem like it's been apart much anyway. That's in lovely original condition, that is. Let me take it closer. So, N1700, N1502, very similar layout. Head drum. I'll check the head, disc, head tips in a minute, but I'm sure they're fine. Pinch roller. It's had some mileage on it. Perfectly serviceable. Lots of dust. Underneath the belts will have fallen off. Nice. Does it have AV outputs on the back? Very unlikely, I think. No, it doesn't. So I'm going to have to do my little uh, AV modification. It means adding a small amplifier to the video circuit. But, you know, I've done that to enough machines already. That's doable. Wonderful. I won't power it up until I've looked underneath and worked on it a bit. So that's going to be a project over the next few weeks. I have some other things cooking as well. I've got something very unusual arriving shortly, but um, I have to decide if I'm going to do this or something rather rare from Tascam first. Uh, I'll have to decide. Okay, well, I hope you've uh, learned something so far from all this work on the JVC DVD recorders, and I'm really hoping that uh, when we get in those regulators that they'll start working properly. And Later, we'll work on this beautiful Scantic uh, N1700 um, uh, Philips machine. Uh, so, do remember to like, share and especially subscribe, and I'll do loads more great content on audio and video technology in the near future. Bye for now.